All right, folks. So in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about impedance and what that means for your amateur or ham radio antennas. It's a little bit of a confusing topic. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to make it easy. We're going to shed some light on it. So when we talk about impedance, um, you can't see it, you can't, you can't taste it, you can't hear it, you can't smell it. But uh, we do measure it, and um, we, we measure this, we generally express impedance in terms of SWR or VSWR. We're going to talk more about that in a couple of slides. But uh, when we talk about SWR, we're talking about standing wave ratio. Some folks put a V in front of that for voltage standing wave ratio. Now, hams like myself, we get worked up about SWR, and we talk about it endlessly. And we say, well, my SWR is this, and my... And uh, we concern ourselves with that quite a bit. And that's why it's important to understand what impedance is. <laughs> I love this chart. So what we're talking about here is when we buy an antenna, they'll often come with charts like this that show its expected or guaranteed performance on certain bands. And here you can see we've got a 60 meter band all the way up to the six meter band with various sweeps that show or a depiction of expected SWR at particular frequencies. Now folks uh, will put this in with their antennas in an enticement to get you to buy their antenna thinking that uh, you made a good deal. But um, let's talk a little bit about this and what it means. So here's where we have to pay attention. Um, antenna companies often include installation instructions, not just the SWR depiction guarantee. And you have to pay attention to these installation instructions um, because no two antenna installations are exactly the same. So your antenna might be a little bit higher, might be a little bit lower, it might be closer to a swing set or a gas tank or something along those lines. Um, your pitch might be a little bit different. Your flat top dipole might not be completely flat or your vertical might not be completely vertical. Um, the same antenna installed in two different places is going to be different. It's going to perform different and it's going to resonate differently. It's going to reflect power differently or radiate power, I should say. Somebody's going to correct me that in the comments um, differently. And your impedance is going to be different. Now, I said we were going to talk a little bit about SWR again, and here we are. So um, as I mentioned, SWR is referred to sometimes as VSWR or voltage standing wave ratio. And it's a measurement of impedance match between a source, typically a radio, or the tuner after your radio, and a transmission line and or uh, load, in our case, an antenna. So sometimes folks will refer to an antenna system being your transmission line and your antenna. We express SWR as a ratio. So, for example, somebody might say, well, my SWR is 2 to 1. And that what that means is, is that at the load, we have a 100 ohms of impedance and a 50 ohm match to our radio. So I have a picture down here that kind of depicts this. Um, you can see your radio and you have your forward or your incident power, and that goes into your antenna system. Depending upon the impedance mismatch, you will have some power reflected back towards your radio and or tuner. The rest of that, hopefully, is uh, radiated out of your antenna as transmitted power. Now, your transmission line and your antenna do have an element called resistance. We're going to talk a little bit more about that and how that can also cause some challenges that we need to overcome in our antenna system. So that takes us to our let's talk about resistance slide. So what resistance does is it limits the flow of current and the byproduct is heat. So there are times where maybe you have a matchbox or a transmatch or you have an antenna or you have something along your uh, antenna system that you can feel that is getting warm, that it's heating up. And the reason is it has what's called or referred to as ohmic resistance that is slowing the flow of current and is resulting in heat dissipation. That's not the radiation dissipation that we want from our antenna system so we can make contacts across the globe and talk to all kinds of interesting people. Um, antennas, coaxial cable, they have ohmic resistance and so do tuners, balance, and ununs. When power leaves the radio, this is important, um, some of it is lost to resistance and then some of it is reflected back based off of our impedance match. So uh, again, let's touch on SWR. When we measure SWR in an antenna, we are measuring impedance, not resistance. Um, now, based off the size of our antenna, the components that the antenna is made out of, the materials, the height, the surrounding environment, all of these things are going to impact our impedance measurement. 
When we measure SWR, we need to make sure that we're measuring it with an SWR meter. That could be a handheld meter, it could be an inline meter, it could be a meter that's built into the radio, or we use an antenna analyzer like an NOVNA or a Rig Expert or the MFJ antenna analyzer. But we use something that's designed to measure AC current as a result of, or AC current at particular frequencies so we can get an impedance reading based off of that frequency. We don't measure SWR and we don't measure impedance with a multimeter. And so uh, one of the things that's driving me to do this video is that I was directed towards a video where somebody was measuring antenna components with a multimeter. And multimeters generally use DC current to measure resistance, not impedance. Don't do that. Don't listen to people who are doing that. It's a mistake. And uh, that person just hasn't learned the right way yet. So what we want to do here is make sure that when we measure SWR, we, <laughs> we're measuring it with verified SWR um, analyzers or, or, or meters. So what makes uh, impedance uh, different from resistance is a thing called reactance. And this is the tricky part that a lot of folks get lost on. So re reactance is a phenomenon that takes place at particular frequencies on AC current running through a circuit. And here we talk about resonance. And as you'll hear a lot of people say, well, I have a resonant antenna. My antennas are resonant. I only run resonant antennas. Well, that's maybe true, partly true. Um, resonance is when there is no reactance, zero reactance. It's when your inductive and capacitive reactants, I'm starting to talk fancy, but we'll, we'll cover this, cancel each other out. And this is almost never at your desired frequency. It happens and it's possible and you can even tune to it. But uh, you almost always have some element of reactance making it near resonant or close to resonant. And uh, that's typically where us as hams operate in close to resonant antennas. Um, when we take a look at this, it's, so here's what you need to remember. Impedance is equal to your resistance plus your reactance. Um, once you remember that, you're good. Uh, there's a formula for it, and you definitely do not need to know this. Um, you'll see it depicted as Z equals R plus JX. So R is your Z is impedance, um, R is your resistance, and JX is your reactive component. Um, and here we have reactance is dependent upon frequency. And this is really important to remember is, is that so as we adjust or we change frequency uh, with our antenna analyzer or with our radio, our um, our reactance is going to change, which is going to affect our impedance, which is going to affect our SWR. So there's a chain of events that happen there. So we talked about what makes up impedance. And uh, again, it's resistance plus capacitive or inductive reactance. We typically measure capacitance in terms of farads, and we measure inductance in terms of Henry's. So when you're adjusting your antenna, say you buy a dipole and you're trimming the legs of it, um, when, you, when you're shortening that, what you're doing is, is that you're adding capacitance to that antenna. If you lengthen an antenna, you're adding inductance to that. Now, you don't think about it that way. You're like, oh, I'm just tuning or I'm trimming or I'm adding to my antenna. But what you're really doing is, is that you're messing with the reactance at your desired frequency. And so what I wanted to share here, this is um, an antenna example. This is an antenna I built uh, probably about 18 months ago. And there's a couple of different things that are going on here. So this antenna is an NFED uh, half wave dipole. And because we're feeding this dipole at the end, we have a much higher impedance than if we feed it in the middle. That's just the nature of dipoles and how they work. So as a result, I use an un, -un. Some people will call this a trans match. They'll call it a transformer. They'll call it a matchbox. Um, but that is the toroid that you see in the center of the blue box with the copper wire wrapped around it. And what that does is that transforms impedance of around 2,450 ohms, again, you don't need to know all this, down to around 50 ohms, which is uh, the expected transmission line impedance. So that way my SWR is low at my resonant frequencies or my near resonant frequencies. Now, a couple things you'll notice is that there's a big old copper coil on the left side of that screen. Um, an NFED half-wave dipole is typically around 64, give or take, feet uh, in length. This particular antenna is 41 feet in length, and I was able to shorten the element by adding inductance to make it look electrically longer than it really is. Um, this also acts as a choke, and it cuts off the 20-meter 20, uh, 20 frequencies. So I can. this is a multiband antenna. I can get 10 meters, 20 meters, and 40 meters. Um, and it's shortened, which is really nice, uh, through the use of that inductor. But also on higher frequencies, like around 10 um, meters, 
uh, you have some trouble with your NFET half wave. So what we'll do is we'll add a capacitor, and that's that little blue um, uh, component that you can see inside the blue box. Maybe it's a little difficult to see. It's next to the red wire. And what that does is adds capacitance to make the antenna appear electrically shorter at higher frequencies. So what I like to use this antenna when I talk about tuning antennas or antenna uh, components and theory and all that stuff is, is that, you know, we play some tricks with our antenna system here to make the antenna a better match on certain frequencies so we can use the antenna across more bands. Um, this is a good example of that. Now, on the VNA, I use nano VNAs, and if you follow my channel at all, that shouldn't be a surprise. Um, if you don't use nano VNAs, you should. Anyhow, this is a, um, a chart from a sweep that I did earlier. And when you take a look at it, there's two things to pay attention to. Uh, the yellow trace towards the bottom of the chart is my SWR reading. Now, this is a sweep that goes from 6.5 megahertz to 8 megahertz, so it encompasses all of the 40 meter band. And what I'm, what I'm looking at here is I have a marker that is a, a number one inside of a Chevron, and that is at a frequency of 7.0745. So it's kind of like right in that FT8 uh, frequency. And my SWR, you can see at the top, and I'll put a little arrow in here to make it easy for you, is 1.3 to 1, which is pretty good. It could be better, but um, that's showing me that it's not resonant. Also, if you take a look at um, the SWR sweep, the yellow trace, you can see that the dip is more to the left. So that tells me that my antenna is a little bit long and it could use a little bit of a trim to bring it more into resonance than it currently is. The other thing that we have is a Smith chart, and that is the circles, all the crazy concentric circles in the center of this diagram. And that is depicted on the green trace. And again, the same frequency is depicted uh, with the green chevron with a one in the center of that. And as what you, what you can see here is, is that my antenna is inductive. The upper portion of the Smith chart is inductive. The lower portion like below the equator is capacitive. Now we can do a video on Smith charts, but generally people aren't interested in that. So I don't do them. But uh, what you can see here is my antenna is slightly inductive and would need to be adjusted in order to be more resonant or near the center point of the Smith chart. Now at the top of the chart, you can see some green text and you see 40.7 ohms, 7.10J. And what that's telling you is that my ohmic resistance is 40.7 ohms of resistance plus my reactive component, which is 7.1J of inductance. So it's easy to understand. And when you use a chart like this, it makes tuning your antennas or modeling your antennas uh, a little bit easier. It's a little bit more of an advanced concept, but it's, uh, it's a tool that we'll use um, when messing with antennas to try to get them as perfect as we can. Anyhow, I hope this helps, folks. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.